And the subject for today is the value of God's Word. The value of God's Word. The word value means how much something is worth. Hallelujah. We put value upon clothing and cars and material things, but I wonder how much value do we put upon the Word of God? Hallelujah. Is it the most precious thing that you have? Or is your Bible so dusty you have to dust it off for Sunday? Because it's been laying there all week and you ain't even opened it one time to see what's inside. Hallelujah. But the Bible, the Word of God, is the most valuable possession that all of us have. Hallelujah. If we did not know what the Lord wanted us to do, if we did not know his will and his purpose and the thing that he does and the way he does it and the examples of how that we can have the same thing happen in our own life, we would not be able to survive. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible is God's word. The Bible is the book of the ages. Hallelujah. Some of the new generation said, well, we have a new revelation of what is supposed to be in our world today, but we have a Bible that you can look in and will give you the answer to every generation that has come. Not just the old people and the middle-aged people and the people who are getting married and the people who are, amen, young, 14, 15, 16, 17 years old. Just get out of high school. Hallelujah. There's a word for you in the Bible. Hallelujah. The Bible is for every age, for every age. Well, I'm such and such an age. I don't think I need the Bible no more. Yes, you do. Matter of fact, you need it more when you, <laughs> when your hair starts to turn gray and you don't be as fast as you used to be and you can't run around like you did and you can't work like you did. You have to think three times before you can remember what you went to the refrigerator for. You need the Bible. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. The Bible is the inspired word of God. First. Timothy, you don't have this. First Timothy 3.16 says, All Scripture, every letter of the Bible, every jot, every tittle of the Bible is inspired by God. Hallelujah. It is God breathed and it is God written. Hallelujah. The 40 original writers who wrote the Bible were not led by human ideas or human thoughts. They were not led by, this is what I think, but they were led by the Spirit of God. And Peter said they wrote as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And so it's not just the NIV and the King James Version and all these other versions. Most of them are what men thought 
that they read in the Word of God. But I submit to you today there are treasures that are in God's Word that we haven't even dug out yet. There's things that we don't know. There's things that the Lord has to show us along the way. There's things that we think we know and we got it. And I don't need no more study about the Bible, but you need the Bible every day. When the message goes forth, you need to hear the word of the Lord. Check it out in your Bible. Make sure the preacher is preaching right. Open up your Bible and look at the holy word of God. Then go to 1 Timothy 2, 15 and study the word. Study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, but one that is rightly dividing the word of truth. Dust off your Bible. Open it up. Look in it. There are five ways to study it, but hallelujah, look in your Bible. Maybe you want to memorize some verses. You can do that. You can do a character theme. You can do a doctrinal theme. You can do a Thanksgiving theme. You can do a Christmas theme. Because it has all types of things that cover many, many situations that are in our lives. If you want to know about salvation, open up the Bible. It'll tell you. And as Bishop J.J. Gibson used to say, it's in the book. Read it for yourself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible is good for, profitable for reproof and for correction and for instruction in righteousness. Hallelujah. How should I live, Lord? The Bible will tell you how to live. What should I do about this situation that's in my life? The Bible will tell you what to do. Because the Holy Ghost will shed light upon what is being said and will give you the revelation of what God is speaking to you from the Bible. Well, I got a problem I can't solve. He got the answer in the Bible. I got a river that I can't cross. He's got encouragement and strength and instruction in the Bible. I don't know what I'm going to do. Open your Bible. That's what you're going to do. See what you find in the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bible is a big book. I wrote about the Bible, 500 pages. But that's not all the book. <laughs> that's the outline of the book. But it's a huge, huge undertaking. Hallelujah. Psalm 119 is the longest psalm in the Bible. It has 100 and 76 verses. Hallelujah. And each section, there's 22 sections. Each section has eight verses in a section. It's perfect, just like God is. <laughs> psalm 19 is a wonderful psalm. Each section begins with a letter of the Hebrew alphabet and it starts with the first letter of the alphabet and it ends with the last letter of the alphabet. It was written by Ezra, the ready scribe, who 
Amen was the one that we preached about one day who came back to Jerusalem after the Babylonian captivity was over and he taught the people the law. Hallelujah. His name was Ezra. Hallelujah. And it has one theme. <laughs> and that theme is the word of God. The word of God is mentioned all the way through. Hallelujah. And we have selected some of the things that we wanted to present to you today. But if you're looking for some, amen, explanation of some things and maybe something that you need to know about the word and something that the word does for you, Get in your Bible, and especially Psalm 119. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ezra wrote this book, and he wanted us to know that the value of the Bible, that it was more valuable than anything else that you'll ever own in your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Looking at Psalm 119, in the first point in our preaching today, Psalm 119, verse 9 through 11. Hallelujah. It says, Wherewith all shall a young man cleanse his way. Hallelujah. So the Bible's not for young people. It starts out in the first section of it talking about the young people. Second section, I'm sorry. Verse 9 said, Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereunto according to thy word. The psalmist said, With my whole heart have I sought thee. Oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. Verse 11 the, the word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Hallelujah. The word of God is valuable. It can change young people. It can change old people. It can change teenagers. It can change criminals that's in jail right now. Hallelujah. If people would only take heed to God's word, they could be clean and holy and sanctified just like we are. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The psalmist said, My heart, with my heart, I have sought thee. Oh, hallelujah. I want to know, Lord, what you want me to do. I want to know what I need to do for my life. I don't want to be in ignorance. I don't want to be set on the side wondering what God is thinking about me. Lord, I'm seeking you. I'm looking at your word. I'm reading your word. I'm studying your word. I have my concordance out with your word. I got my dictionary out with your word. I have several translations of your word because I want to rightly divide the word of truth. How can your word help me? And then when he found out how God's word could help him instead of throwing it away or putting it on a side road someplace, he put it in his heart. 
So why did you put the word in your heart? Is because I must be saved and I'm full of flesh and I'm full of evil and I have thoughts sometimes that are not right. I want to have something that can come up before me. I don't have to take the Bible out. I can memorize this verse and I can say, Thy word have I hid in my heart, Lord that I might not sin against thee. Lord, put a stop in there someplace. Put a signal in there somewhere so that I can have a recall of what has been taught to me. Let me listen to what I heard in Sunday school. Let me listen to the messages that I've heard and the Bible classes that I've heard. And I've been to Phyllis Bible Institute. Help me to listen to the word and hide the word in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Listen to me, church. We should know what God likes and when he don't like. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, it's not hard to figure it out. All you got to do is get into the Bible. Number one, you will find out that he is a holy God and that he hates sin. He loves people with an everlasting love. He loves all the church members. He loves even those that are not saved. He wants them to be saved. But he is not in favor of wrongdoings, injustice, sin, murder, fornication, adultery, smoking, drinking, chasing somebody else's wife or husband. The psalmist said, thy word have I hid in my heart. I know what God likes and I know what he don't like. So why should I offend him by doing something that he don't like? I want his favor. I want him to bless my soul. I want him to bring me out. I want to be the child of God that he wants me to be. That's why I hid my word. I listen to every Bible class. I have studied my Sunday school lesson. I have a little notebook that I write down notes about the messages that is preached. Because I do not want to make God angry with me. Hallelujah. 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 I want him on my side. Now, maybe there's some people don't care whether he lives or dies. Is there a God? Where is he at? How's come he don't show himself? Well, he done showed up a lot of times, and people ain't even seen him. <laughs> Hallelujah. But I want to know what is the heartbeat of God, how can I please him? Even though I haven't seen him, how can I please him? How can I do that which is right in the eyes of the Lord? And the Lord said, open up your Bible. It's in the book. I will tell you plainly what I like and what I don't like. I will show you some time because I'll give you a little whipping about it. But I'll let you know when you're in my will and when you're out of my will. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Psalmist said, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not 
sin against thee. Hallelujah. Psalm 119 and 105 speaks about the value of God's word. Hallelujah. And also write down Proverbs chapter 6, verse 20 to 23. We will be going through these two scriptures. First of all, the psalmist said, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet. And it is also a light unto my path. Now he's taking us way back into the old days where they had lamps and candles. That's all the light you had. When the sun went down and the daylight left, you had to have a lantern to go out to the spring and get you some water and bring it back in the house. They didn't have sidewalks and blacktop. It was all cobblestones. Yeah, hallelujah. So I wasn't even born yet, Elder. Well, we had, we had some kind of we kind of had some things to deal with many years ago that we don't have to deal with now. You turn the faucet on, it comes out. If you want hot, you turn the hot faucet on. If you want cold, you turn the cold one on. You don't have to put no water on the stove and put some coal in the burner and some wood and heat up the water so you can take a bath. You don't have to do that no more. Old people, am I right about it? <laughs> we got everything modern now. We got bathrooms in the house. Lord Jesus. But in that day and time, if you wanted to travel somewhere, you had to have a light. Hallelujah. Because it was pitch dark and you couldn't see where you were going and if you could step in a hole, break your leg, you could amen, fall over. Hallelujah. You could run into something. So they would light the lamp and take it out with them when they had to do a chore outside. And the psalmist picked up on that and he said, well, that's the way the word of God is. Just before I get ready to trip, I'll see something in the word. Just before I get ready to have an accident, I'll see something in the word because it is a lamp unto my feet and it is a light unto my path. I can see where I'm going. I'm not in the dark wondering if there's somebody out there to hurt me, wondering if I'm going to get attacked on the way to the spring to get some water. One of them going to fall down and break my leg or step in a big hole and they won't find me till in the morning. I got my lamp in my hand. And I got a light to show me my path. And I got a light to shine, to show me where I don't get in trouble. I don't get hurt. I don't get lost. I don't fall down. Because it's a lamp to my feet. And it's a light to my path. So we got the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is our guide, but the Word is our light. I don't know how many people that have been saved from a disaster or saved from something that could have hurt them, but they heard a word from the Lord. Ooh. 
Somebody was trying to play a trick on them, but they heard a word from the Lord. They were ready to get in some bad business things, but they heard a word from the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The devil had something fixed up for them, but they thought it was okay, but it wasn't okay, and so God sent a word. Hallelujah. God spoke a word. God said, have no, uh, hallelujah, fellowship with darkness. Come out of darkness. What concord hath Belial, hallelujah, with Christ? Do ye not un unequally yoke together with unbelievers? They have no Holy Ghost. They have no light. They have nothing to give you. They're trying to get something from you. Separate yourself. Get out of that situation. Get away from that person. You keep following them, you won't be in the church very long. They'll take you out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The word of God is a lamp unto my feet and it's a light to my path. Woo. I ain't gonna ask you to put your hands up how many got saved by the word of God. I'm not talking about salvation, but I'm talking about getting in bad situations. I went to the church and I heard the anointed word of God. It was not the man that was preaching it, but it was God that was preaching it through the man. And I heard a word from the Lord said, make a change on Monday because you're on the wrong track. And if you don't get out of this thing right now, it's going to be disaster for you. Woo. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, I feel like preaching today. I know this is Pentecost Sunday, but this is the message the Lord gave me. Hallelujah. I should be talking about Pentecost today, but this is the word that the Lord gave for me. Your Bible is worth something. Getting a better Christian education is worth something. Well, I know, I know, I know. Well, you don't know as much as you think you know. They can't tell me nothing. Well, you ain't going nowhere. Because somebody got to tell you something. Somebody got to lead you. Somebody got to instruct you. If they see something coming on you and don't tell you about it, their blood is on that person. Oh, Lord. I'm all over the place. But <laughs> Hallelujah. The value of God's word is priceless. So I paid $30 for a study Bible. It's worth more than that. I paid $60 for a Spirit-filled Life Bible. Uh, it's worth more than that. It is priceless. There's no value that we can really place on the Word of God. I chose that subject because the value is so high unless, unless you got a billions of dollars 
Even the billionaire cannot buy what is in here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Proverbs chapter 6, verse 20, it said, My son, keep thy father's commandment. Forsake not the law of thy mother, but bind them continually upon thy heart. And tie them about thy neck. Hallelujah. Did you get it? Don't let this word ever be far from you. When you're sleeping, hmm, let it be on your heart. Go to bed with it on your heart. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. God, you promised that you would give the beloved sleep. Bind it continually, not just on Sunday and Wednesday. And at the prayer meeting and devotions and the council and the convention, make a personal pledge to God. Lord, I'm not going to let your word get away from me. I'm not going to allow it to be a uh, in a, in a part of my life that I just leave alone and don't touch for a long time. But Lord, when I get up in the morning, when I rise and I find out that I'm still alive, ooh, Jesus, help me to say a prayer, help me to read a scripture, Help me to recite something that I memorize. Hallelujah. Lord, I thank you for another day. Lord, I thank you for your word. I thank you for your kindness. I thank you for your love. If you hadn't woke me up, I'd still be laying in the bed. The mortician would be coming to pick me up. Hallelujah. But you decided that I could have another day. So you woke me up, shook me and woke me up and said, get up. It's another day. Get up. The sun is up. Get up. It's, it's another day. It's another day for you to glorify me. Hallelujah. Bind them continually upon thy heart and tie them about thy neck. Listen to this. 22. When thou goest, hallelujah, they will lead thee. Hallelujah. When thou goest, the word will lead thee. <clears throat> I love it. When thou sleepest, it shall keep thee. Ha. Huh. And when thou awakest, it shall talk to thee. Ah, Shana. Do you like that? All day long, it leads me. When I go to sleep, it keeps me. When I wake up, the word of God talks to me. 
another day's journey and I'm so glad that the world hadn't done me no harm. What happened? It talked to me, showed me what I needed to do, told me where I needed to go, showed me what it wanted me to do. Does your Bible do that for you? Mine does. <laughs> Mine does. But he said, as you go through the whole day, it will lead you. Whole day. Then when you're tired and think, well, I think I'm going to lay down and go to sleep. He says, come on, honey, climb into bed and I'll give you sleep, but I'll keep you all through the night. Ain't no robber going to sneak up on you if you live by yourself. Ain't nobody going to kill you. Maybe you left the door open last night and didn't even remember, but God remembered and he put his angels out and gave them charge over you to keep you in all of your ways lest at any time you dash your foot against a stone. I left that door open last night. I wonder if they took anything. No, they didn't take nothing. So why didn't they take something? Why didn't they take a TV? We're still here. Why didn't they harm me while I was sleeping? The word. <laughs> Do you get it? The word, the valuable word of God led you all day, kept you while you slept, woke you up clothed in your right mind with the activity of your limbs, while you was eating your breakfast, the word was talking to you. This is a day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice in it. Oh, oh, oh. Hallelujah. I'm not going to be sad today. I'm going to be happy. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? Hope thou in God. Be still and know that I am God. When thou walkest through the fire, I'll lead thee, and the flood shall not overcome thee. It talks to you. Y'all heard it lately? The word talks to you. You know who kept you all night? The word. That's my children. Those are my saints. Keep your hands off of God's property. The blood is on this house. Ooh, hallelujah. I love it. For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is a light, and reproofs of instruction are the way of life. You will never get through anything without censorship or instruction. Like the Ethiopian eunuch said, how can I know, how can I learn except some man guide me? The guide for our life is in the word of the Lord. The value of it is beyond any price that you could put upon it because it tells you what to do. It's good for correction when we're wrong. It's good for reproof when we're doing the wrong thing. 
Hallelujah. But if you want your life to be fulfilled, if you want your life to be exactly like God wants it to be, you have to know the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Back to... <laughs> I love this. The, actually, what I'm teaching you, what I'm preaching to you, the Lord actually does this for me. I'm serious. I'm serious. He really, he really does this for me. You know the scripture I just read? He leads me all day long, talks to my mind. Him and I have conferences together. I guess y'all don't have to... Huh? But if you, have, if you have a close relationship with God and you know the word and you love the word, he will bring back to your mind what you need for that day. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. I said, yes, he will. You got to know his voice. You got to understand who he is. You have to have a close relationship with him and his word. You have to hide his word in your heart so you don't sin against him. But he'll lead you all day. And he'll keep you all night. And when you get up the next day, he's ready to talk to you again. Uh, I thought maybe we'd be shouting, but <laughs> no, I'm not trying to make you shouting, but I'm trying to encourage you because we we got some problems right now that if we don't get the right instruction, it ain't going to work out right. I'm just being serious. Pandemic is still here, hasn't went nowhere. We're still struggling to get the church back online where we got the church fully open, but the pandemic just keeps hanging around, right? But I see a light at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> and I see when God gets ready to move it for whatever reason he wants to, hallelujah, everything will clear up and the world will go back to the same way they were because they're on that, on that path right now. Hallelujah. But I want to see God. And I want to see you form a relationship with God where he will lead you every day, keep you every night, and talk to you and tell you what he wants you to know the next day. Amen. Well, I only got a couple more, but I could preach on that one a little bit longer. But. Point number three is the word is comfort. The word is comfort. That's Psalm 119, verse 49 and 50. Psalm 119, verse 49 and 50. 49 says, Remember the word unto thy servant, upon which thou hast caused me to hope. This is my comfort in my affliction for thy word, thy word hath quickened, quickened me. 
Do you understand what he's saying? You can be going through sorrow, but his word can quicken you. You can have tears in your eyes and his word will quicken you. You can have depressing situations going on all around you. Afflictions are things that make you suffer and things that get to your heart and make you feel bad. But if you can hear a word from the Lord, it will quicken you. You have spoke to me and gave me hope that my change would come. You have helped me in times of need. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But when your word comes, when you tell me it's all right, when you tell me I see what you're going through, don't give up heart. Don't look down, but look up. Draw your strength from God himself and his word. I will lift you up. I will bring you through. Hallelujah. Psalmist said, your word was my comfort in my affliction. I looked around, couldn't find nobody. I searched high and low, couldn't find nobody, but I found somebody. When I looked in the Word, I saw a God that loves me. I saw a God that cares for me. I saw a God that is touched by the feelings of my infirmity. And to know that God was on my side and to know that God was watching out for me. And when I heard it in the word, let us come boldly to the throne of grace <laughs> to find help in the time of need. It quickened me. I said, how you doing? I said, I feel better now. <laughs> I heard a word from the Lord. Hallelujah. Is that all right? Number four. The heading is food for the soul. Soul food. Now, you already know this, but I'm going to say it one more time. When we leave here sometime today, real soon after we leave, we will be having dinner. But when you come to church, <laughs> when you come to church, this is feeding time. One of the saints, he's not here today, but one of the saints told me, he said, what kind of meal you got fixed up for us today? Because <laughs> what you eat after you leave here is not going to have nothing to have nourishment for your soul. But if you take this message in, as it is preached, <laughs> You will find some food, some food, much food for your soul. Hallelujah. Psalm 103, one, Psalm 119, 103, and Psalm 119, 104. Listen to this. Psalm 119, 103 said, Sweet are thy words unto my taste. Mmm, that was good. Mmm, that was real good. Give me some more of that. 
I'll take seconds and thirds. And the word is sweeter than honey in my mouth. Now, now, <laughs> it's got to go some to be sweeter than honey because honey is made by bees. And you can put sugar on and it don't taste like honey. And if you bake some fresh bread, melt the butter down, pour it on the bread and put some honey on it. And even people that got diabetes can eat honey. Am I right about it? <laughs> but if you got something that's sweeter than honey, I don't know nothing else that's sweeter than honey other than the word. And it'll get you to talking to yourself. Mmm, that was good. Mmm, huh? that was good. Give me some more of that, Lord. Mmm, that was really wonderful. Oh, uh, Lord. For through thy precepts, I get understanding. And therefore, I hate, I hate, Every false way. I hate liars. I hate people who mistreat other people. I hate people who try to deceive other people. I hate them. Now, I'm not saying I'm ready to kill them, but I just don't like them because God don't like them. God don't like ugly. God don't like sin. God don't like people to play games with him. He don't like for them to hypocrite and pretend that they're like something when he knows in their heart they ain't like that. The writer said, I hate every way. I hate every false way. Why do you hate it? Because through thy process, by percy precepts, I got understanding. I understand, I understand what turns God on. I understand what makes God like me. Hallelujah. He don't like liars and cheaters and fornicators. Embezzlers, calm people who learn how to get money out of people without a gun. Hallelujah. In my conclusion, <laughs> the Bible is the book of ages. The book of ages. Write that on your notes. And this is the last scripture except the one I want to go back to. 1 Thessalonians 3.16. But this is the last scripture in the message. Psalm 119 and 89 says forever O oh Lord, thy word is settled in heaven forever. Now I emphasize forever is because we see the world changing. We see the climate changing. We see the mindset changing. We see the morality changing. We see all these things going on. But what he's saying is, what I have said, I have said. 
And what I want you to do, I have told you in the word. There is no options. There is no, hallelujah, bargaining with God about his word. We must believe that his word is settled in heaven. His word will never change. If he said holiness, it's holiness. If he said love, it's love. If he said love thy neighbor as thyself, that's never going to change. If he said love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, mind, and strength, that's never going to change. Because it's not settled in the earth or in his universe or in his, amen, things that he has created. It is settled in heaven. The law of the Lord is perfect. It will convert the soul. The things that God has said are sure, making wise the simple. Woo, hasada, koreamana. Meleko, he's not going to change. Maybe God will change. No, he ain't going to change. What he said is settled in heaven. He's not going to compromise with nobody. Well, that's the pastor of the church. Well, that's the worst one, some of them. Some of them. Are the worst. <laughs> they want to change stuff so they can get tithes and offerings from the people. They want to change stuff so they can fill the whole church up with people. But we need to fight for the faith and we need to hold the faith, believe the faith, walk in the faith, never compromise the apostolic doctrine and faith with anybody. It's heaven or hell. Whatever one you want, you make the choice. But God will never, ever, ever change his mind about his word. Because his word is settled in heaven. What is the value of his word? It is valuable because it has so many good qualities. It's worth something. God's word was written and inspired by himself. Man didn't write it, man recorded it, but it was through the dictation of God himself. Those 66 books, that 39 books in the Old Testament, 27 in the New Testament, that book was completed in 100 A.D. I'll let you do the math. This is 2022. Just subtract 100 years from there and you will find out how old, how ancient <laughs> the Bible is. But at the end of the book of Revelation, John said, even so come Lord Jesus, amen. amen. 